Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of A Timeless Window. Today we continue with Lily's Letters series and I apologize for not putting out a video on Saturday. Um, my family was in town and so I was very busy and didn't have a chance to upload or make a video but hopefully I'll be able to make one for this Saturday. But we did go to some antique stores and some places like that and I wanted to show you one of the things I got was this beautiful, beautiful porcelain bust made in, I believe it's called the Turplets Factory. Um, she's pretty damaged, um, but I only got her for $16, and I looked on eBay, and usually these kind of busts range from $45 to like $300 to $2,000. So I'm not complaining. I'm really not complaining. It was a great price, so that is my excuse for not producing a video on Saturday. But today we get to our first letter of Lily's. Again, Lily is a relative of mine that I purchased through eBay. Um, and today's, today's letter is this letter right here. It is from Faulkner Page and Company, 66 and 68 Leonard Street, New York, to Miss Lily Page Eli in Lyme, Connecticut. And this was written in 1878. Here's a closer look at the envelope. Now, sadly, I do not have a photo of, I personally don't have a photo of Lily from this era. However, I was able to get a screenshot of the photo from around this era of when Lily would be from the eBay lot. So I will post that as the thumbnail for this video and you will see and it's a very beautiful picture. Sadly, I don't own it, but I have printed off plenty of copies of it. And actually over here, we have a piece of artwork that my friend did for me of Lily for my birthday, which is really cool. But we do have, this is the youngest photo we have of Lily. It is from around 1873. And she's extremely gorgeous. This particular photo I actually printed out and in a frame above my mirror, I have a version that I printed out and put in an antique frame and actually hand colored myself with colored pencils, so eventually I'll show that. Um, I'll probably save that to the end and show all the different artworks I have of Lily that I've done and that I have from friends because I love her and she's sort of a muse to me. Um, but without further ado, we shall get to reading the letter. Every time I get these letters out, it's sort of like, again, just a step into history because not only is this family history, it is a handwritten copy of family history. And no worries, I treat this with extreme care. I have it all scanned online so that I can preserve it and have a, hard, a digital copy of it should anything ever happen to this version. So without further ado, I will read these letters for you all. New York, April 5th. 1878. Dear cousin, you might imagine from the excessive infrequence with which my correspondence with you has been carried on of late that I have been entirely oblivious of my parting promise to you. But on that my... Oh, I'm so sorry, I apologize. We might have some rough times because the cursive is a little rough and I've read these plenty of times, but we'll, we'll try. But on that, my conscience has really been in quite an unpleasant state for the past three or four weeks, solely and entirely on account of my remissness. To Philadelphia every Monday afternoon, and the hardest and most unremitting toil during the remainder of the week, leaves me little taste if even I had the time for writing. For over three weeks I have worked harder than any other man in the store. I've gone home late and thoroughly exhausted. I've risen as tired from my bed as when I took it, and have more and more fatigued as the weeks roll by. My, my nerves are very rough, exhausted by headaches frequently, and I get but little sleep at night. Forgive me for imploring on you this dull catalogue of my afflictions, but it is simply in order to extenuate myself from a suspicion that might naturally arise in your mind 
that under the influence of the charms of others, I had forgotten you. Far from it. Furrier Martin will soon be able to stroke his head and, if necessary, to swear by it. His... His hair comes out even, thick and soft, and will add fresh beauty to the charm of his features. As soon as it gets in shape, he is going to have it photographed, and I will send you a view of it. I told him this morning that I should write you very soon, and he requested that I ask you from him for the health of the Methodist minister, and as to how your flirtation with Franky, Frankie was progressing. Give the latter my best wishes and fairest hopes. Lucy Whitney has been somewhat unwell, and last week Monday I took her over to Philadelphia to see her bosom friend Anna Woolston, who lives at 122 Chilton Avenue, Germantown, and who, by the way, I find is well enough acquainted with your, with your flame, Bayard Henry, to chafe him about his love affair with you. On Monday evening of this week, I took tea with the Wollstons, and on Tuesday brought Lucy back to Orange with me. Now, for some context, Methodist minister... Lily's father was a Methodist minister, and he actually was the probate judge of Alabama after the Civil War, which is something very cool um, to note. And Orange being Orange County in, um, oh, where is it? New, New Jersey. New Jersey. So, just some side notes. <laughs> I apologize. I'm trying my best to read this as the smooth and historic voice. However, it is not always the easiest to read this kind of penmanship. Did you hear of... <clears throat> and then I get a bubble in my throat. Did you hear of our opera party, which came off the week after? Alas, you left New York. My father, wishing to provide some entertainment for Mama on Friday evening, sent up to booths for a box forgetting that they had nothing there except premium boxes. They gave him one of these, and as he couldn't exchange it, the next best thing, if not better, was to fill the six chairs. Emily, Lucy, Almy, and Furrier were invited to assist. The play was Mignon, which, which I saw for the first time with Roz, with Roz as Mignon, Kellogg as Felina, Carrie as Federico, and Tom Carl as Wilhelm Meister. The house was jammed from floor to ceiling. There must have been as many as 200 people standing, and it was a job of no slight magnitude to push through the jam to our seats. The opera itself was delightful, and the association still more so. Emily has come home from New York, and a week ago tonight I spent a most pleasant evening with the sweet creature, helping her arrange bouquets which she was to distribute on the morrow to her sewing club. Charlie Lee is slowly improving. I had a letter from him on Wednesday in which he writes, hopefully, of a trip to Europe contemplated in June and of his return to business in the coming fall or winter. Joe Iddings has come home from college, very seriously sick of a severe and mysterious cough, where cause is still unknown. Mr. Eddings remarks, sympathetically, that his wrist isn't very much larger than his thumb, but he always was very thin. The reason why I'm so freed up from the engrossing cause of business today is that my partner has gone away to Boston, leaving me to keep shop so that I can't get out, and they're having, on average, only one customer to each hour. I am unable to write in fits and starts. The elegant Langford saunters up this way, a whistle in his mouth, his pocket in his hand, and his unreproachable stovepipe on the back of his head. I know he has come to and, uh, he, I know, again, he's trying to be elegant. I know he has come to my end of the store to talk nonsense. I must stop. Saturday, must close here. Will write again. I hope sooner.
your cousin, Ned. Is that not incredible? So this is the first letter of several that I have from Lily's cousin, Ned, to her. And I just want, I hope you enjoyed this reading. Hopefully I will improve. You know, this is also sort of an exercise of me reading this penmanship, is the more I read it for y'all, the more I will get used to reading it, and the more clearly I will be able to get through it. So, I apologize for this first video. Next time I'll try to be clearer and smoother. Um, and next time I'll bring up again pictures of different relatives in Lily's family. And I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, if you like what you see, be sure to like and subscribe. Or, And if you subscribe, be sure to turn the bell notification on so you can know when I produce a new video. And I hope I can see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Have a great day.